This is BBC One. Now from Glasgow Cathedral, Sally Magnusson introduces live coverage of the funeral of Donald Dewar, the First Minister of Scotland. This afternoon at Glasgow Cathedral, thousands have gathered to lay to rest Donald Dewar, the first First Minister of Scotland. Some here in Scotland called him the father of the nation, an epithet Donald Dewar himself was quick to laugh off. Others have thought uncle of the nation might better express the affection the country had for him, which certainly became obvious in the days after his death. It's perhaps a measure of that affection that so many people are now lining the streets around Glasgow's ancient cathedral to pay their respects this afternoon. Donald Dewar died very suddenly after a brain hemorrhage, only months after complicated heart surgery. He was the person who arguably did more than anyone to deliver devolution to the Scottish people. He battled for it when it was politically unpopular within his own party. He personally scrutinized and argued over every jot of the legislation. And he coaxed together an unprecedented coalition of opposing political viewpoints to campaign successfully for it. What endeared him to the people of Scotland, people in all walks of life, was not just the way he articulated and came to symbolise their aspirations for a parliament, but the kind of man he was. To most, he was simply Donald. Even when he was snowed under with work as First Minister, the piles of constituents' mail always remained a priority. In a rather uniform political world, Donald Dewar was a character who never submitted to image makeovers. People smiled affectionately at his ill-fitting suits, at the way he, he never seemed to possess a raincoat, the cheerful way he led the Queen out of the Scottish Parliament with his hands in his pockets, the gargantuan appetite for food that meant no tray of sandwiches or chocolate eclairs was safe for long in his presence. The people outside there will be able to take part in the service with the help of more than 4,000 orders of service which have been distributed among the crowds. Perhaps above all, these people who've been pouring into the streets around the cathedral today would, would say they liked Donald Dewar because he was a decent man who, for all his skill as a political operator, remained to the end a gentleman. Scotland today feels bereft. Inside the cathedral this afternoon there are 1,300 people representing many facets of Scottish life, from friends and political colleagues to constituents, members of the emergency services and royalty. Prince Charles, Duke of Rothsey, to give him his Scottish title, will be here representing the Queen. The Prime Minister, Tony Blair, arrived a short time ago with his wife, Cherie. Tony Blair and his wife were uh, met at the door of the cathedral by the minister of the cathedral, the very reverend Dr. William Morris, who will be introducing the service today. And Prince Charles is now arriving at the cathedral. The Duke of Rothsey is his Scottish title. It's how we refer to him when he's in Scotland.
Prince Charles also being greeted by Dr. Morris. In a significant uh, relaxation of protocol, the Prince made it clear that he would like to enter the cathedral before Donald Dewar's family. And inside the cathedral, the coffin bearing a single red rose. In its long history at the very heart of Glasgow, this great kirk has never seen a funeral on this scale before. Indeed, Glasgow has never seen anything like it. There's a real sense, as you look around the church here, of Scotland as a family, mourning the man who held the highest office in the land, with many of the trappings of a state funeral, and yet knowing him and each other in the close way, sometimes indeed a bit close for comfort, that's only possible in small nations. Perhaps that's why people find themselves using terms like father to describe Scotland's relationship with Donald Dewar. The cathedral, you'll see, is effectively in two halves. The coffin is in the choir, where Donald Dewar's son and daughter will be joining those close friends who are taking part in the service. Hundreds more are seated in the nave, where the townspeople would stand in the olden days. The site of this magnificent cathedral was where Glasgow first set down its roots more than 15 centuries ago, beside the Molendine or Burn. St Mungo, patron saint of Glasgow, founded a monastic community here. As Donald Dewar, with his celebrated knowledge of history, would be the first to tell you, the medieval borough of Glasgow grew up right here under the protection of the cathedral. Donald Dewar loved this city with a passion. It seems fitting that for his final journey, he should come home to the place where Glasgow began. As we look round the cathedral now, we can see politicians from across the UK and all the political parties. The Prime Minister, Tony Blair, whose friendship with Donald Dewar goes back to the days when, in opposition, they occupied adjoining offices at Westminster. Today, he'll be reading from the scriptures from the prophet Isaiah. The Chancellor of the Exchequer, Gordon Brown, who, as MP for Dunfermline East, was a close associate of Mr Dewar's, he'll deliver the eulogy. And the Donald Dewar's family are now walking down the nave. His son Ian, his daughter Marion, and their partners. Also here, uh, near the front of the choir, is David Whitten, Mr Dewar's advisor and spokesman, who's acted for the First Minister, much Many as Alistair Campbell does for Tony Blair. ...of deep personal loss and sadness. I hope that for us all, this service will enable us to give thanks to God for one man's life 
of service and leadership, and that it will be an inspiration to us all to dedicate ourselves in faith and trust. The Reverend Douglas Alexander will lead our worship now. The grace of God be all around us now. For in the intention of this service, the church in Scotland acts as host to all those here and all across our nation, those who today would want to express thanksgiving for the life of Donald Campbell Dewar and to celebrate the rich humanity and public service of Donald. And the thanksgiving offered up here is in this ancient holy place, place of prayer and of faithfulness down the centuries, whose very stones bring to us echoes of eternity. Yet, a little word of preface must be said to keep faith with the integrity of Donald. For almost 50 years, Donald and I were friends. We were together in the labor club of the University of Glasgow all those years ago. I was then a young student of divinity and Donald regarded my Christian faith with a certain bemused tolerance and he never changed that attitude. Bemused tolerance but always respect, gracious respect. Respect for the church in all its branches and in so much of its work and real respect for other faith communities in Glasgow's and in Scotland's life. That was Donald. Always reserving his own right, as some of you here know, his own right to be, in his own words, a conspicuously cultural Presbyterian. But note the twinkle in his eye as he used to express it so. Some years back, I visited him in hospital. He was in the southern with his back problem. And when I entered his room and he warmly welcomed me, he invited me to sit on the edge of his bed, but remarked, don't take that as any kind of license to say prayers over me. <laughs> well, of course, I did, but only when I had left and was safe outside the room. And he would know, and the twinkle would be in his eye. So here now, the church in Scotland serves as host to all those of every faith and of none who are today part of this celebration of a life, the powerful politician and the lovable man who could also be irascible on a bad day, indeed on any day. And as for the church, it is quite simply and profoundly our conviction that where truth is, God is. Where decency is, God is. Where compassion is, God is. And so to his, Donald's immediate family, 
and to his very real extended family in constituency, in party, and in the country, I say this word. In Donald, there was honesty, there was decency, there was compassion. Thanks be to God, the very stones whispered it with us. And so now, if you share the Christian faith, hold to it now and be held by it. Hold now to your own faith. And if you do not share faith, you are invited by those who do to share in this great act of reverence and affection and solidarity. Worshiping God, we sing the hymn, all people that on earth do dwell.
Father Joseph Mills from the Catholic parish of Corpus Christi in Knightswood, central to Donald's constituency. Father Joe will be leading us in prayer. Father Mills himself has been a long friend of Donald Dewar and a co-worker with him in the work of the constituency. There will then follow a reading from Scripture, from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This strong Old Testament passage will be read for us by the Prime Minister, Tony Blair, who has been, of course, a long and close friend and colleague of Donald Dewar's over many years. It is good to have him here with us. And so now, the prayer. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we ask you to give us a deep sense of your presence with us today. We need to know that you are here in this time of special need for all of us. We pray that you will comfort and console Donald's family and all those nearest and dearest to him. We pray for his colleagues, for those who shared his political beliefs, and for those in other parties who held him in great esteem and recognized his parting as a great loss. May they all be inspired by the memory of Donald's commitment and dedication. Finally, Lord, as we now prepare to hear your holy word, grant us the vision of your kingdom, a kingdom of justice and peace for all people, especially those most vulnerable, those whom Donald delighted in serving. We ask this in God's holy name, to whom be glory this day and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the humble, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives and release to those in prison, to proclaim a year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn, to give them garlands instead of ashes, oil of gladness instead of mourners' tears, a garment of splendor for the heavy heart. They shall be called trees of righteousness, planted by the Lord for his glory. Ancient ruins shall be rebuilt and sites long desolate restored. They shall repair the ruined cities and restore what has long lain desolate. For I, the Lord, love justice and hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will grant them a sure reward and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their posterity will be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge in them 
a race whom the Lord has blessed. Let me rejoice in the Lord with all my heart. Let me exult in my God. For he has robed me in salvation as a garment and clothed me in integrity as a cloak. Like a bridegroom with his priestly garland or a bride decked in her jewels. For as the earth puts forth her blossom, or bushes in the garden burst into flower, so shall the Lord God make righteousness and praise blossom before all the nations. In a moment, the choir will be singing an anthem, a Gallic blessing, with a Hebridean lilt and loveliness to it. This will be followed by a reading from the works of R. H. Tawney, and the background to this will be given by David Whitten who was the First Minister's personal spokesman and who will himself read the passage. Now the anthem by the choir, Deep Peace. Well, I wonder what Donald would have made of all of this. Uh, I think I know. But I know too what he valued as most important, and that was people. The people here to remember him, the people outside who thought well of him, uh, the people who wrote about him, but most importantly, the people whose causes.